Here is a review on the use of significant figures. Let's imagine that we've done a weighing. Here's the mass of some sodium chloride we've obtained. The manufacturer tells us there's some random error associated with our weighing and that this one is uncertain. And in general, the random error is about one in that fourth decimal place. This has some consequences for any calculation that we do. There will be some uncertainty associated with any result. Let's imagine that we want to convert this to the number of moles of sodium chloride. When I take this quotient, my calculator displays a long string of digits. Not all of these digits are significant. We'll talk about the rules for deciding, but this has four significant digits. Our result will also have four significant digits. So this is the first uncertain digit. Everything to the right of that is even less reliable. In general, we then report no digits to the right of the first uncertain digit. But let me emphasize that this is meant for the final result. So in the final step, this applies. If we have a multi-step calculation, we want to avoid rounding off multiple times in the same direction. So it's good practice to carry extra digits and not round off too early. Round off only in the last step. When we look at rules for rounding off, it will be handy to look at the first digit to the right of the uncertain digit. That's a mouthful, so we give that first term, first digit, a special term. We call it the residue. So this digit is the residue. So when I calculate something with this term as an intermediate quantity, if I need to transfer that to somewhere else, I put the residue and perhaps another digit below the line to remind me that the, the three next to the six is our first uncertain digit. Now, when we do finally round off in the last step, frequently we emphasize where the significant figures are by writing this in scientific notation. Then we only show the significant figures in our calculation times some power of 10. How do we decide whether zeros count as significant figures? Let's look at some specific rules to help us decide. It's convenient to count the zeros based on whether there's a decimal place or not. Our first rule pertains to when no decimal place appears. Only zeros between other non-zero digits are significant. So if we have 502, the zero is significant. We have three significant figures here, but 500 implies that the five itself is uncertain. The zeros are not certain, so there's only one significant figure here. So when a decimal point is shown, zeros to the right of a non-zero significant digit are significant. For example, if I have 532.0, this is to the right of a non-zero significant digit. So the zero does count. Here I'm implying four significant figures. Let's take a look at some other examples. In this first case, we see that there is a decimal. So only digits to the right of a non-zero significant figure count. So the zero does count. These do not. I have three significant figures here. Here, no decimal place is shown. So only the one and the two are significant two significant figures. Once again, in the third example, no decimal place shows, but this zero is between two non-zero 
significant figures. So I have five significant figures here. In this last example, I have a decimal place. So anything to the right of a significant figure, which is the one, so we have zero, zero, zero. All of these zeros are to the right of a non-zero significant figure. So I have four significant figures here. Let's take a look at some rules for rounding numbers in the last step. If the residue is greater than five, then round the first uncertain digit up. So let's imagine that we have 0.5 three, two, six, seven is our residue. And this is the first uncertain digit, is a six. So our rule is that this residue is greater than five, so we round up. In the final step, then, our report would just give 0.5327 for our final value. If the residue is less than five, round the first uncertain digit down. So let's suppose we have 4.762. And so the residue is 2. It's less than 5. So we report 4.76. We leave the 6 alone. If the residue is exactly 5, we round so that the uncertain digit is even. So if we have something like 6.7915, and the first uncertain digit is the 1, in this case, we round up to make the result or the last digit even. This way, we round up sometimes and down sometimes. Try to avoid biasing by rounding only in the final step of a calculation. When we perform arithmetic with measured values, the result has some uncertainty associated with it. Let's take a look at some rules that help us decide where the first uncertain digit resides. When performing addition or subtraction, the first column from the left, where an uncertain digit appears, tells us the position of the uncertain digit in the result. For example, Let's add these three pieces of data. We see that the middle entry has an uncertain digit in the first decimal place. Both of the other entries have uncertain digits that appear further to the right. So when we sum this, the first uncertain digit appears in the first decimal place. So I would write this if I were carrying this on to another step, I might bring the residue along and show the data this way. However, if I, this is the last step, I would report 44 point, raising that to a 1. When we multiply or divide, the result has the same number of significant figures as the term with the fewest significant figures. Let's look at a specific example multiplying two terms together, we see that the first term has three significant figures, and the second term has only two. Therefore, the final result should show only two significant figures. Frequently, we take logarithms. The number of significant figures in the mantissa is equal to the number of significant digits in the original figure. Let's look at a specific example. Here we're taking the logarithm of 3.89 times 10 to the minus 8. Our calculator gives us a negative 7.400. The 7 is really a result of the power of 10. It's known as the characteristic. The other digits are known as the mantissa. Our rule says that the mantissa should have the same number of significant figures as the number we're operating on. So this has three significant figures. The mantissa 
should also show three significant figures.